Okay. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine, it works. So what do I, where do I start first? If I want to evaluate the hypothesis that, what? There's an interaction between caffeine and TV on your sleep debt. What do you have to look at first? Of what? An error bar of what? Well, we, we can make an error bar graph. Caffeine and TV against sleep debt. So I'm going to make a clustered error bar graph because how many variables am I interested in? Two. So I'll hit define and then I will go through and put caffeine as category and fall asleep with TV as each cluster. Can I move it either way I want? Yes, because it, it's long as you have a purpose, you can put these whichever one you want, depending on what looks easier. Um, and then what is the variable that I'm measuring? Sleep debt question score. And dun dun dun. Hmm. Well, wait. Sorry. Just for those viewers at home. Okay. Yay. What do you see? Hey. Okay. So when you, <laughs> of course, this is really exciting on the recording, but. When you see this graph, what you see is that for people who don't use caffeine, are these groups statistically different? You don't know. <laughs> you don't know because there's no t they're overlap and there's there's no t test to prove it. These groups, however, are look or they do look seem to be different. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is to test whether I, how I'm going to do my follow-up analysis. To, to figure out how I'm going to figure this out, I go up to Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate. I'm going to look at my sleep debt question score, and then I'm going to put in it as my caffeine variable and my TV variable, the exact same variables I put on my graph. This is a two-by-two two experimental design. Remind me to draw the experimental design on the board after I'm done. So what this shows is that when I do this, there is a significant, uh, is there a significant difference between caffeine and no caffeine? If my F ratio is 0.596. What should it be if the two groups are the same? G well, it's got to be greater than one. And we'll look at TV. 17.543. So when you looked at this and you say, wow, look at that. The TV is signif significantly different. Do I need to do a follow-up t-test on TV? How many degrees of freedom do you have? One. So how many groups are there? Two. As a result, because you only have two groups, we already know if the two groups are different. We look at the means. There's the n, and the, oh, the means aren't on this. I'm going to make another graph. We go back and look at the means for yes and no and you see that wow these means are statistically different for those people who fall asleep watching TV now is there a significant interaction is there a significant interaction is that less than 0.05 no so technically you're done but after looking at the graph don't you want to know if these are different or not I do I really do. So how do I go and find out if these two groups are different? Well, if I do a t-test, if I just go to, move this down a little bit so that people at home can see, analyze, compare means, and then independent sample t-test, what do I put as my grouping variable? But that's going to test both blue bars against both green bars. What do I have to do before I do this? You have to select cases. Select cases. What am I going to select for? No caffeine. Yay. So I'm going to select those weirdos who don't use caffeine. It's a good substance. It affects you a lot more if you don't eat as much food. We have a wedding coming up. i got to get down into you know, buying a new suit level. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> Fat. Okay. So now I've just selected cases for no. Now, if I go and run a t-test, oops, analyze, compare means, 
independent sample t-test. What's my test variable? Sleep debt score. And my grouping variable is TV, no TV. We've selected for no caffeine. So we're only looking at people who don't use caffeine. And we are looking at fall asleep with the TV as our testing variable, or grouping variable. Define the groups are, if you remember, from the 0 and 1. That's how we coded that. 0 and 1. Hit continue. OK. Now, is there a significant difference between those two groups? for no caffeine? Yes. That's kind of weird. But guess what? If I make an error bar graph, you'll see simple error bar graph of sleep debt score and fall asleep with TV. Now, I have a feeling that I, when I did the select cases, I didn't hit the right thing. If caffeine equals 1, oh, that's why. Okay, so that's caffeine equals 1. What do we need? Dumbass. Oh, sorry, I'm recording this. Darn it. So we just did it backwards. See, I meant to do that. We're actually showing this graph first. <laughs> I'll edit that out. Okay. So now we go to, now we can do the t-test. That was the old bait and switch. Chain, keep everything the same. Now are the groups different? Now, a couple of people said no very quickly, but I hear lots of silence from the rest of you. The T value is minus 1.08 at 196 degrees of freedom, 0 0.063. So even though there's no significant interaction, even though you don't see a significant interaction, is th does there seem to be a difference between people who use caffeine and people who don't use caffeine? There seems to be a difference. In fact, that there's people who fall asleep. The interaction is not statistically significant. But if I make my if I make my graph here, what kind of graph show an interaction best? Those line graphs. Multiple line graphs. And if I put my lines as my sleep debt question score and each falling asleep with the TV and caffeine use. Oh, I've already have data selected. That's a cool graph. <laughs> That's like the one error bar graph. Okay. So let me so go back and select cases and all. I love the one big giant bar for the histogram when you have to select cases. It's brilliant. Okay, of course I make them too. Um, and then we go to the line graph, define, don't change a thing. There we go. They cross. Now even though the, this cross isn't as statistically significant, it's not as meaningful, if that's in your hypothesis that there's an interaction, you can still test it even if you don't find a significant interaction. Um, let me just do one more thing. We've got two minutes left on the recording. Um, Let's go through and do this one, univariate. And I'm going to get rid of the caffeine and put in stress level. Actually, let me put caffeine back in. I wanted to do one more thing. Let's look at the actual sleep debt, measured, calculated sleep debt, actual, ideal minus actual, and hit OK. Is there a significant effect of caffeine between ideal and actual sleep? Yeah, and there's also no significant interaction. So what do I have to do now? What's the next step in 50 seconds? I have to make a graph. Analyze. That's perfect. Because when I make a graph, do I already know which group is that the two groups are different? Yeah, so I'm just going to put, we already know what the um, sleep debt one looks like for TV. Let's look at the caffeine one. If you use caffeine, is your sleep debt greater or less? 15 seconds. Come on, you can do it. Less. If you use caffeine, your sleep debt is less. There's a diff there's a less of a difference in your ideal and actual. Huh. 